Hi, have you always wanted to get into farming but just didn't know where to start? Well, don't worry, because Private Properties got you. My name is Marlene Walker and I am a farmer and I'll be bringing you a fresh new farming series brought to you by Private Property every Tuesdays and Thursdays where we discuss all things farming related. I'm talking where to find land, what infrastructure to invest in, even help you decide which crop to grow. You name it, you don't want to miss this. So be sure to catch the first episode premiere of the Private Property Farming Podcast with me on Tuesday, 6th of October, 1pm. See you there. And also, please feel free to share, comment, like the video, and also tell us about your favorite episodes that you have had or enjoyed right here on the Farming Podcast. But firstly, to get uh, the important stuff in, I just want to mention that we have the Real Estate Industry Summit brought to you by Private Property in partnership with APSA, which is taking place on the 29th of October. So for all the private uh, or prop Sorry, for all your, in, uh, your property lovers, this is a wonderful opportunity to expand your real estate knowledge and expertise and hear some of the most influential players in the, pro in the property sector. So this is a virtual event, so be sure to tune on into Facebook on the 29th of October from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The link will, to the event will be in the comment section and also you can get further details on our website. <clears throat> And the details are also available on the show description, or you could visit www.realestateindustrysummit.co. Dot ZA. And so, like I said, you know, you are joining us um, for a very special episode, which is episode 100 of the Private Property Farming Podcast. And um, just to think back, the farming podcast, you know, started out as a mere idea. And I remember I was quite nervous on the first episode because we weren't sure, you know, how uh, you at home would um, consume this content around farming and how would how you'd respond to the information that's provided and I remember the first episode was around finding land because that was one of the most frequently asked questions um, when we started this podcast and also remember that uh, we started in the midst of lockdown um, in the global pandemic. So um, yeah, it, it, it's been quite a journey and um, we're happy to know that, you know, the show has progressed um, and we've got a bit of engagement. We've got a lot of likes. We've got a lot of interest from people wanting to know more. And as a person, I definitely grew more confident in sharing my journey as a farmer, speaking to guests um, day, week in, week out, and knowing that people really do care about agriculture culture and farming and people want to know a lot more information and uh, like I said you know we got more likes we got more traction and I think we've gained quite a, a good momentum to where we are right now again this is episode 100 I love that the show has become more dynamic and that we get to share stories and journeys from various farmers, from various professionals across the industry with many walks of life. And it's become such a collaborative pla platform and an informative space that I could not have asked for anything better. Just remember that we do have a, a competition running called Know Your Crop. It is still on. And tonight, two people will walk away with 500 Rand cash prize each. So in order to stand a chance to win, or um, you have to share this specific live video and comment 
on any crops or health benefits you may um, um, that you may have, and we will select the winner at the end of the show. Basically, so know your crop competition, you're winning 500 Rand, and how you stand a chance to win is to share this specific live video and comment on this specific live video about any crop or health benefits that you know of and will definitely announce your name. So the team in the back end will be looking out for all your comments and for all your engagement uh, behind the scenes and will announce your name if you are the winner. So, um, just to start off with, before we introduce our guests, I want to mention that um, I'll be sharing three of my top favorite moments from the conversations on the farming podcast. And the one that I could think of, which is the first, um, the top three, um, the third one in the, in the list is one that we recently had, and it's episode 97, where we've had um, the topic was Wagyu beef farming, and we've had two young entrepreneurs, two gentlemen uh, by the name of Devin Wells and Henning Klopper, um, who told us about their Wagyu beef farming uh, business. What particularly stood out for me is that, you know, they started this business in a global pandemic. They pretty much... Um, innovated and transformed their parents' farms, which are both livestock farmers, and they put an online element into this uh, farming activity where they predominantly focus in livestock. So what they're selling is Wagyu beef um, online, and um, you know they've grown immensely. They've got a number of orders. I think they've reached a target and are really going um, much further you know, in terms of the goals that they want to reach um, in uh, getting more customers across each province and you know they've got good partnerships that they've connected with and they're getting a lot more orders and what's special about their business is that they're selling wagyu beef which is a premium product and i like how they explained the the process of um you know taking uh, the the cattle into the abattoir and what goes behind that meat production process before it gets to delivered to your door and another sweet spot in their business is that you know they are able to give you a recipe on how to cook wagyu beef so that it tastes succulent and sweet and um, that you enjoy your meal you know because it is quite a niche uh, beef variety that they have going so check out Devin Wells and Henning Klopper on episode 97 which is Wagyu Beef Farming. Let's get on to today's guest and uh, his name is Darvi Fisser, who's not a stranger onto the show, and he's currently working as an agri-specialist consultant. Darvi is running two projects, one in Ermelo, which is a grain farm and a cattle farm, and another one in Komatipur, which specializes in vegetable and citrus farming. Darvi, thank you so much for having you back. How are you doing? Molly, yes, good evening. Thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure, and I'm quite honored to have you back onto the show, especially on such a great milestone that we're celebrating today. So today's topic is all about crop production systems and nutritional um, farming practices or nutritional health. Um, and, you know, I think it's quite a, a, an opportune time to discuss this, especially around sustainable crop production systems, because what we have in the industry right now is that a lot of the input prices um, have gone up. You know, they say fertilizers have gone up by 60 percent kind of squeezing the the farmers margins and a lot of farmers are doing panic buying buying fertilizers in advance because you know there are delays in getting fertilizers from abroad so i want to know from your perspective and what you've been seeing on the ground for the past two three or a month past two three weeks or a month um what have you picked up um with regards to the agri industry where prices are concerned um and where should farmers look out for and most importantly with these red flags, if you may, um, how can we start farming more sustainable? In Bali, yeah, I think um, everyone, I think it came as a bit of a shock in the last three months. Input costs in South Africa, is, uh, there's a tremendous, tremendous rise in the cost and the inputs that farmers need to face. I mean, we're talking fertilizer, we're talking seed, we're talking uh, diesel, fuel, fuel costs. I um, mean, we, we're expecting a, quite a huge increase in fuel uh, next week already in South Africa. Um, I mean, planting season is starting and is uh, started in uh, the northern part of South Africa, and in, in the Western Cape they're going to start harvesting the, the wheat. So it's uh, it really comes at a very tough time. And also on the on the demand side, the marketing side, we don't see that huge demand. So I think there's a not only are we seeing pressure on prices in selling the product, but also in the input prices. So 
it's going to be tough times ahead of us. But yeah, um, the world is changing. The world will keep on changing. It's how we adapt to it. I think that's the important thing. And uh, it's, I think your your topic is very valid tonight about the sustainability. I mean, and that's where we need to get around the table and start making plans. Absolutely. So what are some initiatives that we can start adopting as farmers? Like, do we cut down on our fertilizer consumption? You know, do we move in the more organic way? And, you know, I know sometimes this is such a contested topic because when you're farming commercially with thousands and thousands of hectares, you really want to meet your tonnage per hectare. And especially as a maize farmer, you might know this. And so what are some of the, um, you know, um, innovative solutions that we could get around this and curb these high prices in, in, in input costs? In Bali, what we've picked up in the Morkenstrom area where we're currently running a project uh, on, on a farm there is that in the area, it, there seems to be quite a lot of farmers that's, that's converting from maize into soyas. Um, the big idea behind that is that your input cost, especially from a fertilizer point of view, uh, your need for fertilizer is much, much less on the soyas than what you have on maize and what, all, what a lot of soya farmers have been doing in the last few years. And I think it's a standard, it's been, probably been a standard practice. It was new for me. But I mean, they keep seed back from the previous year. So uh, immediately, if you don't need to pay for your seed, if you can keep some of your, your crop back from the, from the past year uh, and use it for, for, for seed for the following year and your your, your demand for fertilizer is less. Your input cost um, tremendously. It comes comes down tremendously. Obviously, you still have your your, your running cost on implements and fuel uh, that will never change, and, and your labor cost doesn't really change. But I mean, uh, if you probably look at the cost now, you'll you'll see that fertilizer and seed is, it makes up probably about sixty percent of your production cost currently. Mm. Uh, if you if you look at maize and uh, if you would look at uh, look at maize, so yeah, there's good alternatives. Um, yeah, so I think that that's the kind of things that farms are, are, are actually doing, trying mm. to look at al- looking at, uh, at alternatives. We've we've even got a little project going where we say, well, let's plant a bit of cash crops, uh, some vegetables, um, while we just after we finish planting our soils and our our, our maize, um, if we have some time left on the farm and we have some. Some resources left. Let's develop ten or twenty hectares of cabbages as a bit of a cash crop to to help us on the cash from a cash flow point of view as well, and to mm-hmm. carry some costs on the farm. Um, there's no reason why you can do it. There's the on that specific farm. There is some water. Um, the Adamalua region is fairly well known for uh, good wet summers, um, and obviously that's going to assist with the, with growing some 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 uh, uh, vegetable crops on that farm. Just to help, just to help the cash flow. So I think what you've done in the past is not necessarily what you're going to do in future. What you're going to do in future, you need to look at alternatives and what else can you do to sustain the farm and obviously increase your 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 turnover on the farm. Um, you have the resources, you have the tractors. A farmer, a farmer working with um, with 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 maize and uh, and soyas, obviously, he's not going to be busy full time with all his staff twelve months a year. There is definitely some opportunities to do a few other projects on the farm as well and try and see what they can do on the uh, increasing the turnover on the farm. Yeah, and obviously cash crops are quite nutritional. And, uh, you know, I know that you're quite close to the market and understanding market prices and trends. You know, uh, which kind of cash crops right now are, are, are getting good prices at the market and which cash crops are maybe suffering at this stage? Yeah, from a vegetable point of view, we're seeing there's quite a lot of onions around the market. I think it's got a lot to do with the demand that's not there. Um, butternuts has had a, had a very good run, but prices on butternuts is coming down quite quickly. Uh, potatoes also had a good run uh, on the market in the last two three, two months. That's also coming coming down, but still to a level where it's not it's not bad average prices to have. Most farmers will take those prices any day. Um, on potatoes selling for 55, 60 rand a 10 kilo pocket, which is great prices. Obviously, coming into summer, we'll see with the with the um, with the good rain they forecasting for South Africa and the northern part of South Africa. A good a lot of rain doesn't necessarily mean good. It's not good news for vegetable farmers. So we might see um, some prices on certain crops, your know, cabbages and things like that. That's the uh, that's susceptible to, to, to diseases, tomatoes, things like that, when we have a lot of rain. 
probably December and January, then some of those crops might um, increase. But again, everyone's going to be affected if you're going to have a wet season ahead of mm. us. Um, and that might definitely influence the prices going forward. Obviously, the Western Cape, Western Cape had a very good rain season that just passed. And, um, and those farmers will be in a better position where they probably won't have rain. Um, mm. the Western Cape. So, I mean, that is an ideal opportunity for some veg- Western Cape vegetable farmers to look at crops like peppers, tomatoes, more higher value, uh, higher value vegetable crops. Yeah. Especially yeah. for the window, January, February, March, when we normally have a lot of rain in the Brits area, the northern, in Limpopo and Northwest. Um, Brits will normally struggle that time of year with certain crops because of weather. We saw it last year, we saw it this year, earlier this year, and we're probably going to see it again next year absolutely those are very valid points because i've i've definitely experienced uh, those seasons uh Darby, before i ask you um carry on with our conversation i just want to encourage people that you know they need to share this live video and comment below uh on any crop health uh benefits so that you could have uh, something to celebrate in this very special episode of the Farming Podcast as we've reached a milestone episode of um, episode 100. So please do comment and um, tell us what crop do you know and what's its health benefits so that you could win your 500 rand cash prize. So we do have a team that's on standby that's looking at some comments right now and we definitely want to announce a winner. So come on guys, uh, please do uh, engage with us. Um, Send us comments on the comment sections and let us know about your crop so that we could announce your name and that you could win 500 rand in cash prize. Davi, you know, you mentioned something about you know, the rand dollar exchange at the moment, and that if you're a farmer, another way, you know, to, to, to make your farm sustainable, especially around crop production, but this is on the selling part, is that, you know, you should look um, across the borders because of prices at the moment. Um, you know, what are the type of favorite crops um, uh, uh, that are in demand from an export level? Mbali, if you're going to have a look what where all the growth in South Africa was was from in the last, say, 10 years, you'll definitely see citrus is, has been a big mover in South Africa. Um, I think it's important just to touch on that point that you mentioned about the, the crop uh, and the cost. Now, it is, it's a fact that we are net importers of agricultural inputs in South Africa. So we're actually farming in, in dollars, uh, or our inputs is dollar-based inputs. Now, if you're only going to sell your crop locally and earn rands from it, Obviously, you're going to start getting into a position where you can't uh, cover all your all your costs. So, um, and I think part of this uh, success in the citrus industry was that even though the input base is the inputs are all dollar based, but the income from those farmers on from export point of view was all yeah. also dollar based. So they could actually absorb all those extra costs and additional costs that they had to attain for. Um, there's huge, exciting uh, opportunities um, happening in China for us. I believe the the lemon and the citrus market is expanding into into China. The avocados is not too far away from the exports into into China. A lot of our berries and nuts, the berries and nuts, um, they're also getting to China, uh, into China. The demand in China China seems to be fairly strong and keep uh, it keeps on growing. And I mean, it gives great opportunities for South African farmers. Because we're in the southern hemisphere, where we counter season to what's happening in China, so the demand for our crops is going to be exactly when they don't have it in their own market. So I think the the growth is probably going to be, and and where farmers need to look is on the export crops, the berries, the nuts, and the fruits. That seems to be um, exciting markets. Cherries is doing fairly well uh, from South Africa. There's some exciting projects happening with that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, other exciting things is that we saw in Aramalu. I mean, I, I never knew it, but Aramalu is one of the earliest apple production areas in South Africa. Now, you are associated apples with the Western Cape, but there's um, mm. there's no reason why you can't have early apples out of Aramalu. Um, wow. So it's, it's, it's really great opportunities for farmers in that region to diversify. Obviously, the input cost and your, your return on your investment takes a bit longer on fruits, fruits yeah. and nuts and, and berries. It's not as quick as a cash crop, but yeah, it, it definitely creates some opportunities for farmers. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Apples in Mpumalanga, which is, you know, relatively yeah. known as the high fold region, is that correct? That's correct, yes. But I think it's got to, they, they get enough gold units out there. 
there might be even opportunities with things like berries out of out of that same region. Uh, because the cold unit, it's cold enough. Out of the Ermelo region, my Makumalanga region, it's it's cold enough. Um, I also believe there's some exciting work being done on on early um, low demand apples um, that, that that's actually been grown in Limpopo. There's definitely been some developments in the um, Mokopane region with some mm-hmm. with some early apples as well, and and in, in the Polokwane region. So. Yeah, I think things are changing. We need to we need to change with the times. Absolutely, changing with the times. And if you're listening tonight, uh, Darby has dropped some serious gems on the different types of crops you could start growing so that you could get a good return on investment uh, within your farm. And also some, he also shared some tips in terms of how you can make a farm sustainable with very high rising input costs at the moment. But quickly, Darby, before we end our conversation this evening, I just want to mention that without wasting any time, our first winner is Bianca Combs, and she is from Facebook. So congratulations to you, Bianca, but you have to comment before the end of the show so that you could win your 500 cash prize. Tell us anything about your crop. What have you planted? What is it that you like about it? Nutritional benefits, health benefits. So please, Bianca, comment before the end of the show so that you could claim your 500 rand cash prize. And as I said in the beginning, that I'm sharing some of my best moments from the show. And the second episode, uh, or the second favorite episode that I enjoyed was um, uh, having a farmer named Silondiwe Mumalo from Izimbande Farming in KZN. And she's a chicory farmer. Um, if you don't know what chicory is, Google it. But in, in simply put, she's a coffee farmer. And it's not every day that you meet a coffee farmer. Chicory does sound uh, very niche and complicated to grow. And what I liked about her is that she's a new farmer into the space and she thoroughly mm. is enjoying what she's doing. She's had corporate partnerships where they, it's, uh, um, the corporate client has not only given her an offtake agreement, but also has given her some technical knowledge and how to grow chicory um, to the highest standards within her region. She shares such an amazing journey from humble beginnings and how now she She's successfully growing chick- chicory and trying various alternative methods to increase her production year after year. So that was episode 49, a young female farmer based in KZN, and her name is Silondiwe Ngumalo. And I remember we also had her back onto a panel discussion around women in farming or so. And, um, you know, she had some really, really uh, good advices for women in farming, for young women in farming, and especially women in her region and how they can, um, you know, uh, gain access to this thriving industry, wonderful industry, and most importantly, how to just grow your farming enterprise. So, um, Darvi, before we let you go, I just want to know, uh, I know you mentioned a few, a, 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 few, uh, a few tips earlier on in terms of how farmers can hedge against these high prices and we focus more on crop farming. But any, 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 any advice that you could give to farmers, maybe who are livestock farmers, who are also saying, you know, feed is going up. Um, uh, they could have heard you say, you know, diesel is going up and the transport costs from transporting feed from one place to another is also expensive. So what tips can you give to livestock farmers maybe to cut down costs to farm more sustainably? Um, do they start growing their own co- uh, maize? Do they start growing their own feed? Do they research that? Um, yeah, maybe just if you could give us some few tips uh, before we end off the show with you tonight. Yeah, I think in Bali, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, especially in the wet year that we're expecting this summer, and we already started seeing early rains in, in some certain regions in South Africa, Limpopo and Mokumalanga, it creates opportunities for, for especially cattle farmers um, to go and plant some so go and plant some extra feed. Uh, so you can start up building your, your, your feed reserves for, for winter. Now, obviously, the maize farmers, I, I can only imagine... That they will keep on that they will keep on looking and and buying more animals for for the winter to eat from their uh, to feed from their rest. So um, yeah, I think the weather is going to be in our favor this year for things like pastures and for feed for for animal feed. So make use of the opportunity. We don't always we we <laughs> we're not always going to have this great opportunity. Um, free water. So yeah, use it. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Darby, for your insights today. And thank you once again for being a friend of the Farming Podcast. We thoroughly enjoy your knowledge and expertise. And um, it's great that we know that there are agri-specialists and consultants like yourself who are willing to, you know, share some knowledge because farming can be a very lonely journey, you know, um, because we have to deal with so many elements as we run our day-to-day businesses. But thank you for your time this evening and all the best with your two projects in Ermelo and Gomad. To burst. Thank you, Mbali. Good evening. It's a pleasure. That was Darby Fissa, who is, is who is an agri-specialist consultant and is running two projects within Ermelo and Gomati Bird grain and cattle farming, as well as vegetable and citrus. So we really spoke about sustainable methods around crop production systems and also some nutritional benefits, you know. And obviously, if you farm vegetables and citrus, uh, those are definitely re- nutritional crops to have uh, in, in your farm. And um, what I liked is that you also shared some um, you know, valuable uh, tips for not only crop farmers, but also for livestock farmers and how you could really um, be innovative and try to cut down costs in your farming operations. Now to more exciting news as well. Uh, my team has just let me know that our winner, Bianca Comp, has claimed her prize. So congratulations to you. And her comment, if I could read it, was that soybeans are high in protein on, and are a decent source of both carbs and fat. They are rich in source of various vitamins, minerals, and a ben- beneficial plant compounds. Um, So for this reason, regular soybean intake may alleviate symptoms of menopause and reduce reduce risk of prostate and breast cancer. Who would have thought? So thank you so much, Bianca uh, Combs, for for your comment and for your insights as well. And she puts the hashtag episode 100, hashtag the farming uh, farming podcast, hashtag know your crop. So thank you so much, Bianca. And you walk away with 500 Rand in cash prize. Uh, Before I announce the second winner of uh, the show this evening, I just want to mention my last favorite episode of the top three that I've mentioned tonight. I started with Wagyu Beef Farming, which is episode 97, and then told you about episode 49, where I spoke to Usilondiwe Ngumalo. And the last one uh, I've got picked up here, and just by the way, this is not uh, me choosing any specific favorites, but you know, I enjoyed all the farming podcasts because you get to speak to just amazing people that we have in this industry of ours. And um, I think the one that also stood out for me is Uzamugutle Twala from Agri Cool. He started um, farming uh, on his, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was uh, his own backyard or on a small plot, but, you know, really struggled as the time went by to just keep abreast of the, 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 the costs involved in farming. And also he saw an opportunity in the market where a lot of farmers were really desperate to find market. And he thought maybe let me quit farming and rather help the farmers that already exist in the industry by helping them find market. So he definitely used his skills and talents of selling and marketing and that's how we found it agri cool and i know a couple of weeks after having him onto the show he had won a significant prize with a competition that was running with a a, a jsc listed company and um yeah I, I think he walked away with about one million rands and i'm sure that was extremely beneficial to his business and agri cool has just become one place where a lot of farmers are now relying on just to get their produce out to consumers so uh, look out for agricool on social media and uh, maybe if you're a farm and are struggling with market maybe reach out to the agricool team and see how they could market your product so as the show comes to a close i'm happy to announce the second winner and i believe uh, they're also from uh, f- uh, facebook and it's great to know that the, t- the the second winners the two winners tonight are females and the second winner of tonight's show is uh tembi marilyn and her comment was rice health benefits may help maintain a healthy weight brown rice protects against chronic diseases hashtag know your crops hashtag episode 100 and hashtag farming podcast thank you so much tembi for commenting and please uh you walk away with 500 rand cash prize and um yeah that's as simple as that you know this was your know your crop farming uh, uh competition that we have running where you tell us about the crop that you're currently growing 
all that you know of its nutritional benefits, its crops benefits, and why you like that crop specifically. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Both our winners, uh, Bianca and Tembi, have now claimed their prizes and that you um, that, that they walk away with 500 rand. So thank you so much for watching our 100 episode. And we look forward to the next 100 episodes within the Farming Podcast. Maybe we might do a bit of a spin-off, you know, have more, uh, um, uh, more engagements, more panel discussions, maybe be more on the field. Who knows? But send your comments and suggestions if you would like to see some more dynamic comp content on the Farming Podcast. Because at the end of the day, this podcast is for you to equip you and empower with, empower you with farming and agri knowledge that's it for me tonight and uh yeah look out for our episode on thursday and i will see you then take care